Hello YouTube. Today we will be studying a problem from real analysis. We will be using the mean value theorem to prove that the distance between sine of x and sine of y is always equal to or less than the distance between x and y, where x and y are real numbers, any real numbers. So first, before we do anything, we need to establish that uh, two conditions. So in order for the mean value theorem to be satisfied, we have to have two conditions. So conditions for MVT. First of all, we need to know that f of x is continuous on open interval, I'm sorry, closed interval a to b and then secondly f of x f of x is differentiable on open interval a to b so we need to have those satisfied in order to be able to use the MVT at all. So let's look at our function. Our function is f of x equals sine of x. We know that f of x or sine of x is continuous everywhere because it's just a wave that's going back and forth. It doesn't have any discontinuities or anything that would make it discontinuous. And it's derivative f prime or cosine of x similarly is continuous everywhere does not have any discontinuities so therefore f of x is both continuous and differentiable for all real numbers and because it is differentiable for all real numbers it is also continuous and differentiable for these tiny intervals since a b the interval a b is just a small subset of the real numbers so I guess I could write that formally, but I don't really need to because I'm just, this is for learning purposes, not to overload you with proof stuff. So this part is checked out and this part is checked out. So we know that sine of x as a function satisfies the conditions needed for the mean value theorem. So now let's get to what the mean value theorem states. So the mean value states theorem states that you have f of x minus f of y, or rather, I'll, I'll choose f of b minus f of a. Put a absolute value there because it's it's needed. B minus a is equal to f prime of c. So, what does this mean? Well, you know that if the mean value theorem is satisfied. There exists an x of x equals c such that f prime of c is equal to the average rate of change of the entire function over the interval a b. So in this case, we know that b is going to be, I don't know, x. So we have f of b minus f of a. This is an absolute value over, or sorry, we have f of x minus f of y absolute value over absolute value x minus y that's equal to absolute value of f prime of c so what is f well we know f is sine of x so we know that sine of x minus sine of y over x x minus y equals the derivative of f of sine is cosine, so cosine of c. And we know that cosine of x must always stay in between negative 1 and 1. Therefore, the absolute value of cosine of x always has to be less than 1. So, 
what this means is that this sine x sine oh, minus sine y over x minus y also must be equal to or less than 1. So therefore, absolute value sine x minus sine y over absolute value x minus y is always equal to or less than 1. And then if you multiply both sides by absolute value x minus 1, x minus y, we get sine of x minus sine y in absolute value is equal to or less than x minus y. Therefore, proving this statement at the beginning. Anyways, thank you for watching. I know this was not a very rigorous proof or anything, not the rigorous proof you were expecting in a real analysis video, but um, I would have done it, but I didn't want to overload you guys with advanced math terms and stuff. So this is what you're going to get. Anyways, thanks for watching and sticking around for the whole video, and I'll see you next video.